You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. I can't tell you how excited I am about doing this show, but I can't tell you how excited some of the employees at DJI are even more excited to be hearing this show. This is a problem you can literally spot on the television pretty regularly. That's if you watch HGTV or the Discovery Channel or TLC or TBS. Chances are you have seen one of these shots with a drifting horizon line. Oh, no. Why do you get a drifting horizon line? It kind of seems like one of those weird problems that just won't go away or happens randomly. But what if it doesn't actually happen randomly? Well, after 37, or no, it wasn't 37, uh, Peter corrected me, 55 people had to do this calibration to stop their drifting horizon line, which often can't even be seen until you do like a coordinated banking turn in your drone and then you notice it right away. So why does it happen? How do you fix it? And by the way, Peter, you're welcome. Because <laughs> he <laughs> begged me to do this show. So, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, too little, too late. Yeah, I know. Whatever. <laughs> Here we go. How do you fix a drifting horizon line? And why is an IMU calibration important? Important. Important. I love that. She's from New <laughs> okay, Mexico. so we're not making fun of her. She's our we receptionist. Know her. She's wonderful. <laughs> but anyways... Yes, she's, she's awesome. But it, how do you fix it, it and why is it important? Yeah. Oh, you were going to say the New Mexico accent is just kind of it's just funny. It's awesome. It's actually kind of similar. It. it sounds weird to uh, if you listen to some people how they pronounce Hawaiian words that are native Hawaiians. They they have some of the same little uh, idiosyncrasies. It's really interesting. Anyway, um, rabbit, squirrel, whatever. How do we fix a drifting horizon line? It is so simple, guys. Okay, you need to do an IMU calibration. We used to tell people do an IMU calibration uh, once you get the drone and every time you update the firmware, which you should do. But now, after seeing so many people at the fly-in with bad IMUs, I realize now is the time to tell everyone, you pretty much need to do an IMU calibration before you go out for every job. Because frankly, if you have a drifting horizon line, it can really ruin your footage. And it's not as easy to correct a drifting horizon line as it is with a picture you know, in Photoshop, where it's very easy to fix that drifting horizon line. Frankly, you can see a lot of videos, especially on HGTV, that have drifting horizon lines. And frankly, this is a good problem. Why is it a good problem? For those pilots who are niche pilots, and pilots who even listen to this episode will realize that there is an astronomical opportunity out there to still get great jobs. And if you're able to educate a client on this particular problem and showcase what a kind of noob or amateur move it is to not do an IMU calibration, you could have a way in. Ask me if I've done that with someone. Yes. <laughs> you have to be able to explain to your clients the differences between you and your competition. That does not mean you talk negatively about them. This is a hard lesson for me to learn. That does not mean you talk personally about them. You simply ask the client. You say, well, I understand that you have blah, you know, another person doing this, but I would be happy to show you some examples of the differences of our work, and I can be happy to show you some examples of errors I've seen in the work that has been given to you, and I can explain why these problems happen. I maybe wouldn't go into detail to say like, oh, this is a drifting horizon line. That's a very simple calibration error. All you have to do is redo the calibration. I wouldn't say which calibration it is because you don't want to over-educate the client because they may have some sort of uh, deep personal relationship with that other person, and you could actually be ending up helping that other person. So you have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the book, How to Be a Rainmaker, you never talk negatively about the competition. All you say is, do you want to know the technical differences between my work and theirs? Yeah, and accentuate all that you do well. Yes, and don't right? talk negatively about other people. It is so important. Gosh, I suck at it too. I <laughs> suck at it, okay? Let's call a spade a spade. I suck at it. And it is something that we talk a lot about here at Drone U, believe it or not. Because I want to be the best. Is, I want to just be the best. Yes, there's competition in every industry, right? And obviously drones are no exception to that. And so what should your focus be? It's being the very, very best that you can be, being better than everybody else. And if that includes doing IMU calibration so that you're having clearer footage, then... Better footage. Better. Yeah. I mean, like, do you want to look at the right. horizon like that? 
You don't. You can, it also looks like you're flying in an airplane. You're like, whoa. Yeah, and this is one of those nice things because it's relatively simple in terms of a way to separate yourself. By the way, here's another tip and trick. Uh, if it's really hot where you live consistently, do an IMU calibration. This is if you're flying a Phantom or a Mavic. Um, do an IMU calibration inside on a flat level surface. Um, we do have in our new Don't Crash course how to do an IMU calibration. It's very, very simple. Um, you go into main menu, advanced sensors, IMU, calibrate, boom, right there. Um, it's really, really easy. But do the IMU calibration on a flat level surface inside in a very cold room or next to an air conditioner. Why? This shortens the time that it takes for the IMU to quote unquote warm up because from what I've been told, it records ambient temperature when it does a calibration, which I don't know. Hmm. I don't have no way to corroborate that to know if it's true or not, but I will say that I've actually tried this myself because I was doing a lot of work in Florida in 2016, 2017, and it did make a difference. So I can say just empirically, it did make a difference. It could be something else. I don't know, but it did make a difference. Very interesting. So, yeah. Hopefully hmm. that helps you guys out. If you have a question, don't be afraid to ask it. Go to askdroneu.com, upload that question right now. We love those questions. Uh, love the community and really appreciate your feedback, your honesty. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for you and we appreciate you. So thank you for listening and we will see you next time. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 